All right, so what are we looking at? The top left, we've got the Ruger SR9C, right? Yep. And on the top right? Uh, I mean, Smith was an M&P 9mm compact. And bottom left is the Glock? Model 26. And then bottom right is the Springfield? XD9 compact. Okay, so you say they're all good guns. Yeah. Right? All reliable, all accurate, a lot, um, you know, a lot of the same features. Okay, so pick up the Ruger and tell me what, what separates that from the rest. Well, they're all they're all polymer lowered. Um, all have polymer receivers. Uh, the biggest difference on the the Ruger, it has a, a thumb a manual safety. Right. So you can always engage the safety there. Um, an option the uh, the other three don't have. Which is not my friend. I'm not a big fan of a, a safety. Personal there. personal preference. In on case that it's one. left on by mistake. But the trigger. Talk about the trigger. That's the one that has the most immediate of of the four. Trigger on the Ruger. Can um, you kind of hold it up for me. Like, there you go. Okay. Really has no take up, um, just very slight right about there. And that trigger will break from there back. Right. So it's the most sort of aggressive trigger of the four. Correct. And uh, it's also got the longest barrel. Did we figure that out? That's a little bit longer than the other models. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's look at the of difference between the Springfield and the Glock in terms of the uh, bore radius, I believe we're talking about? or uh, so the bore centerline height bore center to the frame. Height. Right. So when you compare the two firearms. Side by side, it's be hard to see here. Um, but with the grip and, and trigger guard being equal, the bore centerline on the XD is higher. Um, typically results in a little more recoil. Uh, the barrel has a little more leverage in the hand, so right. result in a little little more felt recoil. Springfield certainly looks chunkier than the Glock, right? A little bit. If you kind of compare them side by side, um, you know, it, it, it looks its part and then being a little bit higher in the, in the top end. All right, and the the poor man out here is the poor Smith and Wesson M&P. Doesn't, M &P. Get a, doesn't get much of uh, a doesn't get much credit, but it's a good gun. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the closest um, to the Glock 26. Uh, pretty much low low bore center line. Um, you know the trigger on them, fairly long, a lot of take up on them. Um, breaks, you know, fairly clean, but around five pounds, five and a half pounds. Uh, but it is uh, probably the squishiest of all the uh, triggers. Well, the, and the Springfield is pretty darn squishy. Pretty squishy. So we we started. So the, the, we're saying the Ruger has the the sort of uh, sharpest trigger. Yes. With minimal take up and yep. minimal reset. Mm -hmm. After that, the Glock. Yep. And after that, the Springfield, which is pretty squishy, but mm -hmm. but reliably so. Yep. Predictably so. And then the Smith, whose grittiness uh, doesn't impress me, the trigger. But there it is. And mm -hmm. as you said, they're all dead reliable guns. If you had to choose one of these, which one would you choose personally? Well, choose the Glock. Um, you know, it's got the longest history. That's kind of the most proven of them all, I, I believe. Um, but you know, strictly comes down to personal preference, the accuracy, the reliability. Um, two most important things. They all have it. So. Okay. What about how the way they feel in the hand? Do you want to just talk about quickly for how the Ruger? Is the narrowest handle of them all, right? The narrowest grip. Yeah, the Ruger has the thinnest grip, uh, which may help certain folks with shorter fingers or smaller hands, um, so that may be a consideration. Right. It's always um, always in choosing things like this. It always comes down to the personal preference of the matter and, and whether you like it. The, um, the but, Smith & Wesson has replaceable back straps, so uh, you can adjust it. There's a small, medium, and a large grip on it, um, so it's fully adjustable in that respect. Some people like that. It may, may be a selling feature for some people. Uh, the Glock doesn't have that at all. You get what you get, and uh, bit of a brick. The Glock is it? It is. Yep. And uh, the um, XD same way. You know, you can't adjust the grip at all. It is what it is. What uh, about the grip and angle? There are a lot of people who feel that the Springfield's uh, better in their hand than the Glock. They just don't like the way the Glock the, fits in the hand. The Glock has more of a European grip angle, um, which is slightly less than than Can most. Can you uh, pick up and demonstrate it for me? Yep. Actually, if you just look at the guns, it's it's kind of hard to tell. But if you per if you get the slides perpendicular to each other, the angle of the grip here is slightly different on the Glock than it is on the uh, the XD, and some people that causes them to point the Glock a little bit high, um, coming out of the hand because they're, they're positioned the hands the same way, so the barrel's pointed slightly up, the gun's pointed a little bit high, so the grip angle may play into the selection as well. Okay, so it really is a matter of personal preference rather than one gun being a real big standout. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think here, if you, you compare an apples to apples, that uh, any one is necessarily better than the other.